Hi, this is Gary Rosenzweig with FlashGameU.com. And one of the most common questions I've gotten uh, over the years from my different books, and now with my new book, uh, ActionScript 3.0 Game Programming University, is how do you take a matching game, a typical matching game, and convert it so that instead of matching two pairs of the same thing, say two apples, you're matching two different things that match together, like for instance, apple and the word apple, or maybe two different looking apples, or uh, something else that matches together, say like a pencil and an eraser, that type of thing. Um, this is a very common type of thing to do in an educational uh, activity. So I'm going to take the matching game from the book in chapter 3 and modify it uh, very simply. There's a lot of different ways to modify this, but uh, I want to do it in a way that minimizes the number of changes. So taking matching game 10.fla, in chapter 3 there's 10 different versions of the game, each one building upon the previous. Um, so I'm going to actually take, if you look here, um, matching game, I'm going to create matching game 11 for matching game 10. I'm actually going to use the card object 10, card 10.as, unchanged. Uh, but I'm going to create matching game 11.fla and also matching game object 11.as and basically I just duplicated the files and then I'm going to go make some changes so it recognizes these uh, for instance in matching game 11 I go ahead and there's the matching game object here uh, in that I actually change it so it's matching game object 11 instead of 10 and it, the class is matching game object 11 so it'll access the matching game object 11 dot as file rather than the matching game object 10 dot as file and if we look at that file I had to also change uh, the class name and also the constructor function to have 11s in them. That's really all I had to do and now I had a basically a duplicate of matching game 10. Then I went about creating this new version. Now first thing I need to do is create cards that were something that uh, would change. So for instance if you look here at uh, we still have the back card as the first frame and we have the mascot's head right there as the second but then the third frame is actually the word mascot. And then we have open book and the word open book. And you can see now we've actually got 37 frames rather than the 19 frames. That being, uh, there are actually 36 cards on the screen and we were doing pairs before. So there'd be two of the mascot's head, for instance, um, making a total of 18 face cards and then the turned over card here. So now we have a total of 36 individual ones. And the only thing connecting this card to that card or that, or the uh, book card to the open book card, are the fact that they're in adjacent frames. So frame two and three match, frame four and five match, etc. All the way up to these last two frames that match. And that's the changes I did graphically. In the script, I basically had to create a couple of changes, but not really very much to get this to work. First thing is right here in this loop where it actually creates the cards are going on the screen. What it was doing before was it was taking the board width and board height, uh, which is a 6 by 6, uh, dividing it by 2. So it would take 36 divided by 2 is 18. And then it would twice push that number on there. So it would put, say, 0, 0, then 1, 1, then 2, 2. And you end up with the pairs of cards on the in the list like that. Instead, we're actually going to go through all 36 spaces and push each one once. So instead of 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, we actually have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 35. So 0 to 35. So each card is going to be unique on the screen. And we end up with basically, if I run it, you can see the, you know, words and pictures. So now that we've done that, all we need to do is make sure that when we're looking for matches, that instead of matching the identical cards, we actually match cards that are adjacent to each other. So the way to do that is very easy. It's just one change here. This line. Bef before, what it was doing is it would check to see if the first card dot card face was equal to the second card dot card face. So for instance, card 2 matches card 2. Now we're actually dividing by 2 and then taking the lower value of, of that. So in other words, if the uh, it was card 5, card face 5, it would divide it by 2, which would be 2.5, and lower that to 2, which is what math.floor does. So you would end up basically with a first card, if the first card was 4, divided by 2 would be 2, math floor of 2 is 2. Then second card is 5, divided by 2 is 2.5, 
math.4 of that is 2, so you have 2 equals 2. So basically card 4 and card 5 match. And that's how you determine a match and we remove the cards. So now the now the game will work by matching cards that are adjacent to each other in the proper order. So we can find a match here. And I think there's a pennant down here somewhere. Here we go. There we go. So now we allow a lot of users to do that and and perhaps create a more educational experience. I'm going to put these files up uh, along with the podcast. I'll probably uh, I'll put up the new uh, matching game uh, matching game object 11.as and the matching game 11.fla. And then if you just match that with uh, the file you already have from the the book um, to get uh, using the card 10.as with it. Uh, you'll end up with uh, with this game, and uh, hopefully that that helps some people. Uh, check out the full. Of course, you need the full game to do this, which is in the book uh, Action Script 3.0 Game Programming University. But even if you've made your own matching game, uh, this technique could be used, and I'm sure applied uh, to your code as well. Thanks. This is Gary Rosenzweig with FlashGameU.com.